Jacob's Ladder, as it is found in the Old Testament, opens quite a field of inquiry. We can't really hope to cover all the aspects of it, but we want to bring out a few of the points which have a bearing, perhaps, upon our own futures. So we come to the idea that the ancients had, and we had ourselves down to the time of Copernicus and Galileo, that the physical universe was only a small part of creation, that the rest of it was just as real, but not within the range of our sensory perceptions under normal conditions. Occasionally, someone with an extra scent has brought back information of great interest, but it wasn't possible to settle it down into science because it was another dimension and would not fit into the two-dimensional world of modern physical research. So this brings us now into the story of the ladder. The ladder, of course, is one of the most ancient symbols that we find in the religions of the world. The ladder of Jacob, upon which the angels ascended and descended, is only one of many examples. The same concept as that occurs in the Revelation of John. We remember the night journey of Mohammed to heaven from the rock Moriah, where he goes through the orbits of the seven planets, and they become the steps of the ladder. We find Ishtar descending through the seven gates to rescue Amos, the divine in man. We find in the mystics of the Middle Ages, the Rosicrucians, the alchemists, the Kabbalists, always a strange and wonderful story about this septenary mystery of life. We find it in, even in Homer's Odyssey. We find it in China, in India, in Greece, in Egypt, in Persia. We find it everywhere this mysterious idea of verse, the layers of which are the steps of a gigantic ladder. Now this ladder, if we are to believe Hermes, the great uh, Egyptian uh, mystic, the thermaturgist, of whom, whose life nothing is known. But anyway, in his emerald tablet, Hermes declares that the above is like the, like the below, the superior is like the inferior. The lesser is like the greater. The greater is like the lesser. All things follow one immense pattern. And if anyone can break the mystery of that pattern in any one point, any one level, he has the key to the whole mystery. But in the philosophies of most nations, there has been this recognition uh, that the solar system the human body and space itself are identical in law, identical in principles, differing only in magnitudes, and that we can explore them a little more carefully if we so desire. And in ancient times, the earth was placed in the center, and around the earth in rings uh, were the orbits of the seven planets of that time of which we only five were actual planets. The Chinese had somewhat similar designs, but preferred to use squares and triangles. But this uh, target-like solar system was the Placidian system of ancient days. It continued, it began on the face of the earth, and the, a line, a ladder, ascended from the surface of the earth to the extremity of the solar system, which to these people was the planet orb of Saturn. Above Saturn, they had the Empyreum, the world of the heavenly realms and regions, the abodes of deity. Therefore, there were these seven rings, concentric circles, ascending in order from the face of the earth, through the orbits of the moon, and then Mercury, then Venus, then the sun, then Mars, then Jupiter, and finally Saturn. And Saturn was the ancient father who devoured all his own sons. It was a very interesting legendary behind Saturn. Saturn is a symbol of a very deep composure. Saturn is a, the final statement of a maturity blending inside spiritual enlightenment with material adjustments. Saturn is therefore the symbol of that balance which, when achieved, makes the individual 
almost indestructible. The seven different levels, like, Mo, like uh, Muhammad climbing the seven rungs that fell from the sky, but which led him up to the uppermost, and at each of the seven gates was one of the seven patriarchs of the Old Testament. But when he came to the seventh gate, so strangely enough, in a Muslim book, the guardian of that gate was Christ. He comes into the presence of the Great One. In this sense, in Egypt, we follow very closely the story in the Apocalypse of John. But we come to the great figure walking among the candlesticks, carrying the stars. This is a symbol of that which is above these limitations. This is a release in which the individual, having step by step overcome the impediments which he has placed upon himself or has permitted to society to place upon him through wrong education and wrong laws, that the uh, individual comes into the presence of Osiris in Egypt and comes into the presence of the Lord with the stars and the candlesticks. And in every religion there is some, whether it is Shanti in China or whether it is Mahavarakana in J Buddhist Japan, all of these symbols will represent coming face to face with the truth. I need to tell you this so that you understand what I'm going to say uh, about the Giza Plateau. It has been well established by my uh, colleague, uh, the engineer and archaeo astronomer Robert Boval, uh, in his book, The Orion Mystery, uh, that there is an astonishing resemblance between the pattern of the three great pyramids on the ground at Giza and the pattern of the three stars of Orion's belt. And we need to understand it immediately that the constellation of Orion was not just any old constellation to the ancient Egyptians, it was actually the most important constellation in the sky. Hermes declares that the above is like the, like the below, the superior is like the inferior, the lesser is like the greater, the greater is like the lesser. All things follow one immense pattern, and if anyone can break the mystery of that pattern in any one point, any one level, he has the key to the whole mystery. <laughs>